And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Monumental. Monumental is, well, quite a big game, that's the name of the game, from Matthew Dunstan. Matthew Dunstan's made a lot of games that I really enjoy, Chocolate Factory, Elysium, and so I was excited about this one. It's also from FunForge, whose quality is extremely high. It's also been a really long time since this was kickstarted and stuff, so I was excited to see it come. It was, it's a civilization game that moves through history and you have different things. I assume at this point, I go into civilization games assuming that the theme won't be tremendously strong, but this one did have some cool pictures, some cool, uh, I mean, just the, the cover itself looks really cool. Uh, the, the people attacking each other, and I was really pumped about it, and I was hoping it would be an easy game to get into. Well, let's take a look at it. In this game, each player is going to pick a faction. So this is one of the factions, the Egyptian faction. You'll get a leader. So here we have Ramses II. This is this, his card. Shows movement, um, defense, and also special ability. First time he conquers a province, get two production. Uh, here actually is Ramses himself. You also have several soldiers, explorers, and outposts. And so you're going to take all these and put them on a base on a map. Players are also going to have some culture cards here that are very specific to their culture and a deck of cards. Now these cards are all fairly similar where are libraries, work camps, and forts, but there's also some specific cards in there for each of the factions themselves. Each player is going to deal out a city. This is a three by three grid of cards, with the exception of knowledge cards. If you put a knowledge card out, you get to put another card on top of it. So it like gives you an extra card. And this is your city, with the rest of your cards being a draw pile that's nearby. Now on a player's turn, they're going to activate one row and one column in their city. So if maybe I want to activate this bottom row and this last column. It's up to you which row and which column, so you, basically you're going to be activating five cards. At the end of your turn, you're going to be discarding those and then using the deck to fill in the new spots that you had in this area. And if you activate a card that's on top of a knowledge card, you'll be able to use that knowledge. So for example, this one here says, pay two basic resources to get a gold. Now most of the cards are going to give you basic resources. There are three types of basic resources. We have production, black, blue is science, and red is military. You can take these basic resources as you tap them, so you'll see these all give one of each of those different things, but you can only keep those and use those on this turn. Gold, which can be kept from turn to turn, well, it allows you to basically act as a wild resource of whatever you want. And some things will give you culture, which is going to allow you to buy your culture cards. And sometimes when you activate bu buildings, they'll give you a special ability. Like this one here says, let you archive a card or pay two basic resources to gain a culture. Archiving a card means pick one of the cards that you did not activate that turn and basically removing it from the game. Um, or, and then culture, like I said, you can get to use to buy these different culture cards. Let's talk about production first. Production can be used to build more buildings in your city, essentially get another card. Uh, there's always going to be three cards here, laboratories, workshops, and archery ranges that provide two science, two production, or two military uh, that you can buy. Or there's going to be a row of cards. The game is split into three eras, one, two, and three. Although if you want to make the game longer, you can also add the Renaissance. Welcome to it. Uh, each of these is going to have a bunch of cards that are going to be coming out. And each turn, the, if, if a card's not bought, one of these goes away. So this is going to be constantly moving and it's going to direct the flow of the game. When this deck runs out, the game is going to be over. And there's all sorts of things you could buy in here. For example, this temple costs four production. When you activate it, you simply get a culture. Uh, this mathematics here costs three science. And now when I activate this in the future, I'll get another science. There are also, uh, this market here costs three production and gives a gold. And these are going to get better as you go through and you get to the level three. Like for example, here's radio later on. That's going to give two culture. 
although that will cost two science. Or perhaps I'll get this industrialization here, which lets me build a wonder section for free. Or this factory, which gives me three production. The other thing you can do with production is you can build wonders of the world. When you get build a wonder of the world, you'll take it. You'll put a marker on front of it, this wonder of the world. The Hanging Gardens costs three production. And you're going to take this card, and it will allow you, when it's finished, to copy the bonuses of your cultural policies. And when you build it, you get a culture. But you're going to need to build it twice. You need to pay three, cult, uh, three production, and then three production again, and then it's built and gets added to your deck. Uh, you can only be building one wonder of the world at a time, unless there's a special ability that supersedes that. When you build these, any card really, it goes on top of your deck, so you'll be able to draw it at the end of your turn and immediately get it out into your city. Military is going to let you move around the map. So you're going to be building a map based on how many players and what kind of game you want to play. And at, you'll have a starting city where you'll have all your stuff to begin with. But you can use military points to move to an adjacent tile. Uh, you can even move through your own tiles to get to an adjacent tile. And when you move in to attack a city, you're going to need strength equal to a random token that's there as determined by the map plus the defense of that so this would be three I would need to move three into there so maybe I move these two and I move in Ramses himself to get in there I get to conquer it I'll then flip the tile over and I get one of the two things here I can take one gold or I get two production if I conquer this one here I get one gold or to science. Sometimes you'll find a free city here. Not only do you need to conquer that with here the three military, but you also pay whatever else the cost is. In this case, it's three gold. And here I get one culture or four matching basic resources. There's also trading cities you can find. The here Babylon. To get and use these, you need to move your explorer. Your explorers are not units. They don't attack or defend. You simply pay one military to move them around. And if they end their spot one of these turns, they'll get these production tokens. These are just like the black production tokens, except these are permanent and last from round to round. You don't have to use them all up in that round. If you end in a trading city, you can look at all the tiles and choose one. So I don't want three gold, four science, two culture, or four production. All those are pretty handy and useful. And you'll take one and then put the rest back. You can attack other players. If you have a higher military force than they do, you'll just remove them and they come back to that area. As the game goes by and you build wonders of the world, you're going to have to place those wonders of the world in areas that you have. And in fact, somebody else can conquer it and take over it. And since they're worth two points at the end of the game, since only one wonder can be in each tile. Although wonders do add to the defense of tiles. So there's no dice in combat. You simply just need to spend enough military to be able to move in. Culture can be used on your turn to put a culture card into play. The first culture card you play costs one culture, then two culture, etc. When you put a card into play, you get a, a bonus on it. So, for example, this one here says, take a basic building. So I can take one of those buildings that gives me two production or two military. But now it gives you a special ability. So for here, the first time I gain a barbarian token each turn, I get both bonuses. That's pretty cool. Then I could later on, let's say, build another culture card on top of that one. And when I put the other culture card on top of it, I get both automatic abilities. So I get a basic building and I can reinforce a card. Reinforcing lets you pick one of the cards you activated on a turn and leave it on the table. But now I have a new special ability. The first time you archive a card each turn, gain two gold. And so you can get, you can kind of quadruple or quintuple your bonuses, but you're only ever going to have one of these in play at any given point in time. So you have to, as the game goes through, decide which of these is going to help you the most. The game's going to end after the final round when the last cards run out of the deck made up of era one, two, and three cards. And then scoring is really simple. Each province that you control is worth one point. Whoever has the most gets three. Each knowledge card that you've collected, the blue ones, over the course of the game is worth a point. Most is three. Wonders of the world are two points each. Most is three. And each of these cultural uh, policy cards that you got in play is worth two points. And the most in play is worth three. And then whoever has the most points is the winner.
There are three modules included with this game. You have an Automa player uh, where you can play solo, so that's included with the game. You also have a pile, these are just a few of them, of different heroes. You can pick these, you pick a couple, stick them in the deck, and these will show up, and you'll be able to take the matching character, use that character, but it's going to return so that other people might take it. And then you have monsters. When you turn over a barbarian tile, there's always the possibility that it will show a monster name on it, and then these monsters will come out and attack you or cause all sorts of problems so you have miniatures for each of these monsters and or heroes and they're just little modules that you can stick in you can play with both or either there are five different factions in the game I've already been showing you Egypt but there's also Denmark there is Japan China and Greece. Each of them comes with their leaders. And you can see each of them, the first time Ramses conquers something, he gets production. First time Siegfried does, military. Science for Japan, draw two cards and use one for Mulan. And then Hercules here gets a gold. So they all have a, a different start there with each of their leaders. But then beyond that, they have some extra cards. So they each have their culture cards. But for example, the Greeks have philosophy. Pay a basic resource to get another basic resource. Gain a military for each fort uh, archery range that you activate. And then the culture cards, what are you gonna do here? This one lets you spend your science to get military. Or whenever you build a wonder, you can pay any type of resource. While the Egyptians are good at building, they can build two wonders at the same time. Here I can pay a gold to draw cards and use them. Or copy a bonus of one of my other cultural things, and that's the Greeks. While the Chinese here, Mulan has pyrotechnics, which lets archive a card, lets her get rid of cards out of her deck faster. And then get a gold if you get at least a science, military, and production. So it's about kind of uh, diversification. When you conquer a province, you can move and explore one tile. When you complete a wonder, you get culture. So China can move their culture a little faster than the other factions. Uh, Denmark here uh, has a good chance to move their explorer. They can also conquer from far away if they have navigation, pillaging. They're all about conquering. The, the, the Danes pay two merit to get a culture. That, forget culture itself. Just use it to get the culture from your military. And then Japan here. Uh, can reinforce cards, use the same cards over and over again. And when they conquer a free city, it costs two fewer resources. Here's another way to reinforce a building. Or when someone has more problems than you, it costs two less military to conquer their provinces. Or when you get a knowledge card, you can immediately use it. So they each have a very different feel to them, but they also all play fairly similarly. And you can see that they have different miniatures for each of the different forces also. So, of course, this is the deluxe version. comes with various miniatures, and the miniatures look really cool. Uh, there's the guy in the front cover of the box. And, yes, uh, you could use the original guys, and, in fact, it might even be easier. Fitting all these different models on your starting text is actually not possible. You have to set some aside. And so this is definitely one of those, do you want to see miniatures running around the board or not? I don't think they're necessary but they're really cool. It comes with these plastic trays to keep them in. I don't know that I would necessarily keep them in the plastic trays. Uh, I think it'd be easier to just have a bag full of the stuff for that particular person. Uh, these discs are nice. They fit on the bottom. The cards are very nice quality. Uh, very good artwork and I especially like how you can tell the difference. There's a little icons here in the corner of the cards that show you what faction it goes to. But you can tell by the artwork itself, usually, what faction it is. And I thought that was just a neat, nice addition. I also liked how the monsters looked and the different things that are in there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the coins that come with the game are like this. I have the upgraded metal coins. Nice, but not necessary. The one component I don't like are these tokens here themselves, like culture. Are, is this. These plastic discs to me are just not as useful as having actual things that might look like what they are. So I have to get this is this is black. Oh, okay. And that's blue. Yes, you can see the color, but I think I would have preferred those tokens myself. And the hexes are very plain, I think, compared to the rest, but there's so much stuff on them. And of course they have this pseudo ooh, look round. It fits yeah. Okay, they're just hexes. Um, at the same time, there's you know, they're okay. They have a little bit of information on them, and that's all you need. But the artwork and all the wonders of the world, that I'm really happy with. And overall, you know, it comes with these different inserts and stuff. It comes with 
three different rule books. One, Civilization Manual, which just talks about different civs and gives you maybe some strategy on how to play them. You got your straight up rule book here, which tells you how to play. You have a scoring board, which is okay, it's fine, it's not that important. And then you have the different maps that you're going to build as the game goes by. I really like Monumental, and there's several reasons for that. One, you'll never find a civilization game that's extremely strong thematic civilization that's also fairly short. So you're not going to find that here, although they did a pretty good job at having you move around, attack, and build up things uh, for as what it is. The game itself is going to vary in its length. Uh, I would say a two-player game could be done in 60 to 90 minutes, three-player, 90 to two hours, four-player a little bit longer, and in fact, I think I like it best with a, a couple fewer players, uh, just because you take your turn and go on, and there's also a, a good chunk of setup. There's a big, a lot of the table space is used up for this game, even though the game isn't quite that big, especially if you're using the deluxe stuff with all the miniatures that I, this is the one that I back, so this is what I have. Now, I will say this going in, that at its heart, this is simply a deck builder game. You're building a deck of cards. You start with your own custom deck, and you put it out in front of you, and you're playing five of those nine cards. And then you replace them and play five more, and you're trying to buy better ones to put in your deck and trying to get wonders of the world. But you're also going for points. And one thing that kind of threw me off when I first played this was the points were, are, are different. You're like sitting there and building it up. It's, oh, wonders are two points. Controlling area on the board is one point. Having these cards is one point, and, and building culture cards is one point. But scores aren't going to be huge in this game, so everything you do counts, and you've got to kind of really focus what you're doing. My positive points are the five cultures all feel different, and even if you play one of these cultures, you can play it differently. You have those five culture cards, and the order you play them in matters. Like if I build the Egyptian where it says I can work on two wonders of the world at one time, great, so I start doing that and then I build another culture card, I can no longer do that. That special ability is gone. Oh, man, maybe I should have played that one a little bit later in the game. I'm not sure which one do I want first, which one do I want second. That's a really cool concept. And then buying the cards that come out. I can be the Greeks and build the pyramids, the hanging gardens, and the Statue of Liberty. I like that idea. And you're, But at the same time, it's just a simple deck builder. You're playing the cards. Activating them, getting the resources, spending them. It's a really clean system. You spend production to build stuff, science to buy science cards, and red to move people on the board. When you're moving people on the board, do you want to move and be military? Or do you want to run that explore around, try to get to markets and pick up those extra production points? Very simple game uh, in, in teaching it and understanding how it works, but it looks like a bigger, more grandiose game. A lot of that's because of Fun Forge, and I think that actually may put off a few people who will see this big, grandiose game and go, man, we could have played this in a smaller area. I don't mind, and I love the different artwork, and I love the factions, and in fact, there's another box, which I'll take a look at later, which has more factions in it. The uh, Lost Legends, you know, the, At the Atlantis faction is in the game, and I like this too. This kind of is a realistic history, but you have the heroes. You have the monsters. A couple caveats here I want to point out. The Renaissance, there's an extra phase to put in there. It's between era two and three, you put those cards in there. So they're a little bit stronger than two, a little bit less strong than three. This lengthens the game. I played it with and without them. I don't think you need them. You could do it if you just really want to play a longer game and maybe with two players I would put them in. Monsters are neat, although I can see people not wanting to play with them. I want to play with them just to see the monster cards. Heroes are also pretty cool. And since you only use a few heroes per game, that really offers a lot of replayability to the deck in general. Solid game. This is the right down my wheelhouse of midweight, well, a little, maybe a little higher than midweight, but a civilization game that has really strong mechanisms. The idea of it being a deck builder, which I like, and doing deck building in a different way makes me really happy. So, highly recommend it for me. Monumental. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!